Kaylee McEnany, co-host of Outnumbered. How are you doing, Kaylee? Good morning doing to well. you. Doing well. Thank you. Uh, let's do this clip from Chris Christie in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. This is on how he argues that he's going to win over Trump voters. There is no such thing as Trump voters. He doesn't own them. He didn't take title to them. They're not one of his buildings. I voted for him twice. Okay? Am I a Trump voter then? I, I would say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he voted for him twice. All right, Pence, Christie, Bergham, et cetera. Where are we? Yeah, look, Christy, I, I don't see how this campaign strategy is a winning one. Uh, when you look at the field, the front runner is Donald Trump. He's very popular among Republican voters. So a takedown campaign, which is what this appears to be, he may help some of the other candidates. He may help DeSantis or those who don't want to directly call Trump by name. But currently, he's polling as an asterisk in our Fox News poll. That means under 1%. Uh, in attacking the front runner in a manner, he said, a lonely, self consumed, self serving mirror hog. I don't think any name calling behooves any candidate, and particularly when you're aiming it at a popular front runner. Then what about Mike Pence? You served with him in the White House, but you have an objective. You, you can look at this objectively. What did you think of his announcement, and what are his chances? I thought it was very strong, his announcement. Um, he has two qualities that I don't think any other candidate on the stage has. Number one, he is the only candidate other than Trump that can say, do you remember those four years where we had economic prosperity? Well, I was there beside the president helping to guide the way there. Uh, he can also say, arguably, I'm the most seasoned candidate in the race. I stood toe to toe with Tim Kaine. I stood toe to toe with Kamala Harris. I'd been a governor. I was in Congress for 10 years. That may help him on a debate stage with nine people. He's gone toe to toe. He's been under the spotlight. Uh, the Pence campaign tells me today the location they chose is strategic. They're going to be in all 99 counties in Iowa. Uh, they also said expect to hear something forward looking. And while Mike Pence is well known, they say people don't know him well. That genuine, authentic vice president I saw in the White House, it's very likable and has a good sense of humor. They're banking on that to take him far in Iowa. The challenge, though, uh, how do you get noticed? You know, Ron DeSantis drove a news cycle today um, on mm -hmm. immigrant flights. Mm -hmm. Two days ago, Tim good Scott point. did, going on The View. How do you drive the news right. cycle if you're Mike uh, Pence? Uh, that's a great point. You mentioned the word banking. Uh, within the last hour, Brooke Singman broke a story from the RNC about bank your vote. Yes. So this is a campaign now to educate Americans, specifically Republican and independent voters, how you vote in 2024. And it's pretty much about embracing early in-person voting, absentee voting, ballot harvesting where legal. This is a lot of what they did not do in 2020. It's a huge reason why Republicans did not have great success in the midterms. Uh, the RNC committeeman from Pennsylvania, he came out, his name's Andy Riley, he said, any party that votes for 50 days speaking of Pennsylvania and what Democrats have done, is going to beat a party that votes for 13 hours. He's exactly right. Fetterman had 960,000 mail-in votes. Oz had 234,000. Wow. Who went on to win the race? John Fetterman. Great. Happy to see Republicans do this, but an afterthought in the article was, oh, and we plan on competing in the digital space, too. I want to hear more from the RNC about that, because Joe Biden's banking on that. He brought TikTok influencers to the White House ahead of the midterms. They had a reach of 67 million. Wow. So I want to hear, in addition right. to mail-in voting, what are you doing on TikTok and these right. platforms to get young voters? Also, because, it, it, just a, a quick comment, a lot of these campaigns will hire people on their own, consultants of their own staff, really, to go out and then try to get this. So they're doing it through third parties. Some of the results have been abysmal. The results, for example, in the Nevada Senate race last year, they, the people that were hired to reach out to Republican voters, they were sitting, you ping their phone, they were sitting at the Starbucks. Yeah. They mm -hmm. weren't doing anything. So there's a lot that could be improved in that front. That is so true. And also, the RNC has to have willing partners in the campaign. You'll notice in that article, they said, look, we've got to have campaigns step up and emphasize yes. the importance of mail-in voting on the trail. So it's up to the candidate as well. Kaylee, thanks. Great Thank to have you. you. In the Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.